Cadets, this is your first Starfleet Academy mission. Several star systems are threatened by drifting minefields. Your job is to destroy the mines and to capture the devices controlling them. Further instructions will be sent to you as your mission progresses. Now, Mr. Forrester, we need you to choose your vessel. The more powerful your vessel, the more difficult the scenario will become. I'd like a Miranda-class ship. Miranda-class? <laughs> this should be interesting. This is Trek Zone Plays. And you can get exclusive behind-the-scenes info and first play access to all Trek Zone podcasts by becoming a member today. Click join on every Trek Zone video on YouTube. Go to the trek.zone slash support or scan the QR code on screen throughout the show. Captain's log, stardate 2967.5. Weapons of war do not recognize truces, ceasefires, or peace treaties. They're capable of killing millennia after their wars have been forgotten. Our mission involves these weapons. We must neutralize several dangerous minefields that are threatening Federation space. Message from Starbase, Captain. Warp to System S-1222. By pressing keys Shift and W to engage warp. Your course is automatically plotted by your navigator if it is a mission objective. Course laid in, Captain. Entering System 1222, Captain. After entering the system, go to Red Alert by pressing the A key and then the R key. Target a mine. Use the keypad zero or period keys to cycle through targets. The targeted item will have a square around it. If the square is red, it is in phaser range. If the red square has crosshairs, the target is in photon torpedo range. The keypad plus keys selects the nearest target. These mines fire weapons at the ship and explode in close proximity to the ship. Do not approach them too closely. Button one on the joystick will fire phasers, and button two will fire the photon torpedoes. Each ship has a limited complement of photon torpedoes on board, so use them sparingly. After destroying all mines, target the first mine controller. Switch to disabling phases by pressing the F key. Note, photon torpedoes do not have a disabling mode. Using photon torpedoes on a disabled ship will destroy it. Once the mine controller is disabled, Starfleet will order you to go to system S-1622. Warp to system S-1622 by pressing Shift and W. On, one side shield's repaired. Thank <laughs> you. 
Upper shields have been hit. Forward shields have been hit. Forward shields down to 50%. Upper shields repaired. You have destroyed the mind controller. Next time, use a lower power setting on your phasers. You have completed your mission in this system. Proceed to system 1622. Course laid in, Captain. Forward shields repaired. Entering system 1622, Captain. Target and destroy all mines once more. Disable second mind controller. Forward shields repaired. Disable second mind controller. Upper shields repaired. Shift and W. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. Congratulations. You have dealt with overwhelming odds in a manner consistent with the best traditions of Starfleet. The Kelsey Collective, a culture which died over 100,000 years ago, marked their territory with highly radioactive marker buoys. As with all Kelsey artifacts, Federation law prohibits their removal from that system, and we have several probes monitoring any activity that may endanger their status. Recently, our probe in the Huron system malfunctioned. It is your mission to replace that probe. In addition to that, duty cadets, you are to protect the artifacts of the Kelsey Collective at all costs. Captain's log, stardate 2980.6. We've been assigned to the Huron system to replace a faulty probe that monitors a field of artifacts. We expect an uneventful mission. Warp to the Huron system by pressing Shift and W. Course laid in, Captain. Entering Huron system, Captain. The edge of the Kelsey Collective Artifact Field is dead ahead, Captain. Target a boy or probe debris by pressing either the keyboard slash and asterisk keys or the keypad zero or period keys. Non-hostile targets and non-ship targets are selected using the keyboard slash or asterisk keys. Do not target Artifact Boy 1. Launch a replacement probe by pressing the P key. Probes are modified photon torpedoes without the warhead, so they are also taken from your photon complement. Don't use them recklessly. 
Captain, sensors are detecting a freighter within the restricted zone. It is the Kaizag, a stolen freighter that was reported missing Stardate 5680.2. Captain, it is removing a marker buoy. Captain, the Kaizag has gone into warp. It is set course for the Onyx system. Course laid in, Captain. Follow the Kaizag to the Onyx system. Now entering Onyx system, Captain. The freighter has released the artifact. It is heading directly for Onyx 2. Capture the artifact. Approaching object. Radiation approaching hazardous levels. We have the buoy in our tractor beam, sir. Hailing frequency open. Starfleet, Starbase 12. USS Banting. Take the object to a safe distance from Onyx 2. Then destroy it. Take the boy a safe distance from the planet. Sturek will tell you when, and come to a full stop by pressing 5 on the keypad or the tilde key. Release the probe by pressing the T key again after you are at a complete stop. Go to red alert by pressing keys A, then R. Target the boy by pressing the keypad 0 and period and destroying it using your phasers and photon torpedoes. It is now safe to destroy the object. The deal has been released, sir. Shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Shields are Captain, the warp drive can't take it. I need more time to repair them. Lower shields repaired. Starboard shields online. Forward shields repaired. That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Starboard shield online. Return the Kazakh's hail by pressing H, then 2. Request the captain to surrender. Be diplomatic, but firm. I am Captain Marv Markai of the Federation Freighter Kaizag. I intend to file an official protest on your actions and this unprovoked attack. You have just stolen an artifact and endangered a planet, and you expect me to take your protest seriously? Save it for the courts, Markai. If you don't surrender now, you won't be given a second chance. Stop whining, Markai. We still have power in our phaser bank, and I'd hate to see it go to waste. Freighter Kaizag, this is the USS Banting. We request that you stand down immediately and surrender. Although we admit no wrong on our part, we agree to your terms. Captain, the Kaizag is following us. Object is out of range.
our tractor beam, sir. Starboard shields repaired. object. Radiation approaching hazardous levels. Entering Huron system, Captain. The edge of the Kelsey Collective Artifact Field is dead ahead, Captain. Approaching object. Radiation approaching hazardous levels. Turn to the artifacts field. Replacement probe launched. Mission objective complete. Frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. Starfleet ordered you to destroy a radioactive artifact. Instead, you deliberately disobeyed orders and returned it to the place where it was stolen. Starfleet doesn't like its orders to be blatantly disobeyed. Except when they are as obviously flawed as those were. Well done, cadet. Congratulations. You have dealt with overwhelming odds in a manner consistent with the best traditions of Starfleet. Good afternoon, class. We have a guest speaker today, an expert on Klingon affairs, Captain James T. Kirk. Thank you, Commandant Rothero. I'd like to say that I'm honored to teach these fine young cadets. There is a serious situation on the Klingon border. A small Klingon and Romulan combined fleet has crossed the neutral zone and is advancing on Epsilon IV. Now, there's some bad blood between the Epsilon colonists and the Klingons for decades. We believe the Klingons are planning some sort of punitive action against the colony. That still doesn't explain why they're working with Romulans. It will be up to you to protect the Epsilon system until reinforcements arrive without starting a war. Do not return to base until you get authorization from Starfleet. Dismissed. Captain's Log, Stardate 4055.4. A long, bloody war with the Klingons is probably the Federation's greatest fear. And once again, an incursion from the Klingons has brought us to the brink. Course laid in, Captain. Captain, I'm receiving a distress signal from the Medusan freighter Auriga in Beta Epsilon. It's being attacked by a Klingon bird of prey. Course laid in, Captain. A Klingon bird of prey is attacking the freighter, entering Beta Epsilon system. Captain, the bird of prey is moving. Forward shields have been. Upper shields down. Object is out. Forward shields are critical, sir. The object is too fast to tractor, Captain. 
That shield system is damaged, Captain. Recapture. Something is warping into the system. Shields down to 50%. Port side shields have been hit. Lower shields down to 50%. Upper shields online. Upper shields are at critical, sir. That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Port side shields repaired. Starboard, starboard shields down to 50%. Crystals are realigned, Captain. Warp drives are ready. Aft shields repaired. Lower shields repaired. Aft shields have been hit. Forward, sh forward shields have been hit. Object to aft shields repaired. Upper shields down to 50%. Lower shields repaired. Forward shields repaired. Lower shields have been hit. Forward, forward shields down to 50%. Starboard shields repaired. Lower shields repaired. Upper shields repaired. Are fit as a fiddle now, Captain. Phasers are operational again, Captain. Starboard shields have been hit. Lower shield, upper shield, shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working. The impulse engines have been hit, Captain. Starboard shields down to 50%. Lower shields have been hit. Port side shields repaired. Upper shields online. Lower shields repaired. Completed repairs on the track team, sir. Object is out of range. Lower, sh lower shields down to 50%. Lower shields are critical, sir. The warp drives are fit as a fiddle now, Captain. Half of shields repaired. Captain, I'm receiving a distress signal from the freighter Drake in Gamma Epsilon. It's being attacked by a Klingon bird of prey. Object is out of range. Upper shields down to 50%. Forward shields repaired. Forward shields have been hit. Upper shields, upper shields are at critical, sir. Forward shields repaired. Port side shields online. Lower shields repaired. Entering Gamma Epsilon system. A Klingon bird of prey is attacking the freighter. Captain, the bird of prey is moving to intercept us. Upper shields repaired. Klingon bird of prey decloaking. Port side shields repaired. Lower shields have been hit. Starboard shields have been hit. Lower shields repaired. Lower shields are critical, sir. We've completed repairs on starboard shields repaired. Upper shield life support has been hit. Phasers have been hit. That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Upper shields repaired. Forward shields down to 50%. Forward shields down to 50%. Forward shields are critical, sir. Object is out of range. Port 
Aft shields repaired. Port side shields repaired. Lower shields repaired. Forward shields repaired. Shields have been hit. Aft shields repaired. Upper shields have been hit. Upper shields repaired. They're not talking, Captain. Crews are working on it. Captain, the freighter reports that all is well. Forward shields online. Entering the Epsilon system. The Klingon is moving to intercept us. Captain Epsilon Four is attacked by Klingons. You're now able to transport Governor Ryan aboard. We have him. Sir, a Romulan warbird is decloaking. The D7 has triggered an auto destruct sequence. Incoming message from Star Open a chat. USS Agincourt, this is Romulan ship will help attack the Federation research base on Pascal II. The attack on Epsilon was just a diversion. Return to base immediately. Star fleet out. Mission beamed on all channels from Klingon space. On screen. I am Kumas, governor of the Hansnar province, patriarch of Clan Tarkat, and hero of Kronos IV. For years, we have been forced to endure the treachery of the Federation colonists of Epsilon IV. Now they are arming rebels on the Klingon world of Intah. This will not be tolerated. I promise the Klingon people we will have justice. Or we will have blood! Course laid in, Captain. They're not talking, Captain. Crystals are real. Shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Forward shields online. Lower shields repaired. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished. You've done well, cadet. The governor was saved, and so were the freighters. Your crew works well together, in spite of their occasional bickering. You did extraordinarily well. It was a nearly flawless mission. I have nothing but praise, but I've never been particularly good with praise. Welcome back again, cadets. Our intelligence believes that Governor Kumas the Klingon commander behind the attack on Pascal II is acting without the sanction of the Klingon High Council. On top of that, there's been a battle between one of the Romulan warbirds that raided Pascal II and two of our ships, the USS Demeter and the USS Alexandria. Unfortunately, the Demeter was destroyed in the battle. The Romulan's warp engines were damaged as well. You will join the Alexandria and the USS Rutherford in their search for the damaged Romulan. If we're lucky, we'll catch her before she can repair her engines and warp out of the system. Good luck. Captain's Log, Stardate 3551.3. We are on a mission to intercept an intruder into Federation space, and we hope learn more about the reasons for the Klingon Romulan invasion. Course laid in, Captain.
entering the pass call system. Captain, the commanding officers of the Alexandria and the Rutherford are standing by. Captain, I have a theory on how we might find the Romulan. Go on. Space is not completely empty. There are still atoms in space, distributed evenly by the Big Bang. However, a cloaked ship would mask these atoms and register as a perfect vacuum. A single ship would take weeks to scan even a small area of space, and they would detect more anomalies than genuine readings. However, two ships with all power diverted to sensors could serve to eliminate anomalies while a third ship searched. We might find the Romulan in hours, maybe minutes. Lieutenant McGeeah, pass on Mr. Stirk's plan to the Alexandria and the Rutherford. We'll conduct the search. They'll remain on station. Yes, sir. A sensor anomaly briefly appeared ahead, Captain. What is it, Mr. Stirk? It could be an anomaly, or it could be the Romulan. We should try to localize our search. Course laid in, Captain. A sensor anomaly briefly appeared to starboard, Captain. These are the remains of the USS Demeter. It was destroyed by a barrage of Romulan plasma torpedoes. Object is out of range. A sensor anomaly briefly appeared ahead, Captain. A sensor anomaly briefly appeared ahead, Captain. A sensor anomaly briefly appeared ahead, Captain. Captain, we found the Romulan. The Romulan is decloaking, sir. They're not talking, Captain. Captain, two Klingon disciplines have warped into the system. Forward shields. Captain, we're being hailed by the Klingons. Audio channels only. I am Katara, captain of the Klingon war cruiser Patrol. The Romulan is an ally of the traitor Kumas. Surrender him now, or be destroyed. Captain, the Patrol's transponder codes match one of the ships that crossed the Federation border with the invasion fleet. Klingon vessel, you are in violation of the Arganian peace treaty. Surrender at once. Nice try, Katara, but I've seen better bluffs. Klingon vessel. We Klingons do not know the meaning of that word. That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. We're pretty busy right now, but we'll give you whatever support we can. Starboard shields online. Upper shields, upper shields are incredible, sir. Port side shields have been hit. Port side shields down to 50%. Upper shields are incredible, sir. Warp engines are critical. Photon shields are 50% efficiency. That shield system is damaged, Captain. The character is working on it. Port side shields are critical, sir. Lower shields online. Upper shields online. Lower life support is critical! Life support system offline. Starboard shields are at critical, sir! Forward shields are critical! Lower shields online. Shields have been hit. Forward shields are critical, sir. 
Life support system. The phasers are operational again. We got her engines back online. You can take her into warp. Starboard shields repaired. Receiving a message from Starfleet. You are to return to Starbase immediately. Course laid in. Captain, I'm getting a transmission beamed on all channels from Klingon space. I am Kumas of the Hansnar province. We have ended the insurrection in Intah, uncovered a Federation sensor system used to spy on our worlds, and humiliated the Federation's fleet at Pascal 5. I will not compromise the security of Hansnar province. I will not bow to Federation pressure. No one will deter us from our right to act as we please to pursue the greater glory of the Klingon Empire! Hailing frequency open. Everything is going. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. You have done exceptionally well on this mission. Dealing with a cloaked Romulan ship is one of the most difficult tasks you'll ever have to face. We have a serious problem developing on the Galactic Rim. Unknown raiders have been attacking freighters in the Montgomery and Churchill systems. You will patrol four systems, Mountjoy, Montgomery, Allenden, and Churchill. Start with the second planet in each system, then proceed to the next. When you've patrolled all four systems, return to Starbase 11. Good luck. Captain's Log, Stardate 3101.7. A mysterious raider has attacked shipping along the Galactic Rim. Starfleet has ordered us to patrol the area in the hope that we will be able to uncover the raiders' identity and stop them once and for all. Course laid in, Captain. Captain, I'm receiving a distress signal from the freighter mother load in the Churchill system. It's under attack. Course laid in, Captain. Entering Churchill system. We have an open channel to Captain Norton of the Mother. Will you please stop these fools from attacking my ship? Uh, we'll have a talk with them. Captain Kestel of the Pinter's Folly is responding to our hail. Open a channel. Thank goodness you're here, Captain. That ship is a pirate vessel. Its hull is shielded to prevent sensor readings. Obviously, because it's carrying stolen cargo. This man's ship must be impounded, and he must be put on trial for murder. I have Captain Norton on subspace... Right. I heard what they said. If they had bothered to check our flight plan, they would have found out that we're carrying a cargo of Denovite, which creates an energy field that scrambles sensors. We had to equip a special module to navigate while carrying this cargo. Do you know how much these modules cost? Captain, your ship sensors should be powerful enough to get through the Denobite and confirm that we are not pirates. Please scan us. Then inform these people that if they fire on us again, I'll make damn sure that they lose their license to carry cargo in this sector. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> They're carrying a cargo of Denobite, which naturally blocks sensor scan. Denobite is listed in their cargo manifest, Captain. Captain Kestel, we just scanned the mother load. Its cargo is Denobite, which blocks low-powered sensor scans. We have no evidence that it has done anything wrong. Now, I suggest that you power down your weapons before I impound the lot of you. Well, uh, are you sure he isn't a pirate? Unless you have any other evidence against him. There's nothing to suggest that he is anything but a hard-working freighter captain like yourself. Uh, I am uh, sorry, Captain. I suggest that you talk things over with the mother load. You owe him an apology, at the very least. Tempest out. Captain Norton is waiting. Thank you for your assistance, Captain. 
unfortunately, for some mysterious reason, were way behind schedule. So if you don't mind leaving us to go about our own business, we'd be much obliged. Course laid in, Captain. Entering the Allendent system. We have confirmed our approach on Allenden 2. Course laid in, Captain. Entering Churchill's system. We have confirmed our approach on Churchill 2. Course laid in, Captain. Entering the Montgomery system. We have confirmed our approach on Montgomery 2. Captain, I'm getting a distress signal from a freighter in the Laurier system. It's under fire from an unknown alien ship. Course laid in, Captain. Captain, I am detecting an alien vessel in the system. It is attacking a freighter. The alien has ceased its attack and gone into warp. Its course should take it to the Walpole system. I have the freighter. Captain, thank you for your assistance. We thought we were dead for sure. A pleasure to help. Look, I've been piloting the rim for a few years now, but I've never seen anything like that ship that attacked us. It was big, very big. Two wings that fold up butterfly fashion, warp nacelles in each wing, and some sort of high-end disruptor. Captain, you've got to track this thing down and put it out of business before it hits anyone else. Our sensor log indicates that it warped the Walpole system. I'd start searching there if I were you. Entering the Walpole system. Captain, I am detecting an alien vessel in the system. It is heading towards the system's asteroid field. There is nothing unusual to report, Captain. There is nothing unusual to report, Captain. This is Captain Forrester of the USS Tempest. Identify yourself. I am Kaldos, captain of the Venturi ship Retaliation. Captain. I have the entry on the Venturi from the ship's computer. The Venturi are Federation members. Their star is dying, but the majority of the populace have refused to immigrate. They have complained that the Federation aid is not sufficient to meet their needs. Your attempts at aiding us were insulting. When Earth and the Federation first came to us, we welcomed them as brothers. We shared our wisdom and our resources with you, but in our time of need, you gave us nothing except sympathy and a few meager handouts. Sympathy does not revitalize dead soil or dying oceans. The Venturi do not understand the difficulties they face. Planetary revivification is even more complex than terraforming. We outnumber you, Captain. Lower your shields and beam over your surplus dilithium crystals or I will be forced to destroy you. Captain, the Venturi are not known for having their own starships, and that ship does not match any known design. Therefore, it must belong to another alien race. The Venturi aren't a race of warriors. Do you expect us to take this threat seriously? The Tempest will surrender its dilithium. Just give us a few minutes to remove it from our stores. The Venturi are an old and honored race. Isn't piracy a rather humiliating way to continue your traditions? At least our race will survive. Once we can pay for the aid that is required, 
the Venturi will once again walk among the stars. You have 20 seconds to lower your shields for transport of the crystals, or we will fire. There is nothing unusual to report, Captain. What's up with that shield system is managed, Captain? The crews are working on it. Portside shields online. That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Starboard shields online. There is nothing unusual to report, Captain. Lower shields have been hit! Forward shields, upper shields have been hit! Lower shields repaired. Lower shields repaired. Port side shields repaired. Life support has been hit! Lower shields, both engines have been hit! Crystals are realigned, Captain. Warp drives are ready. Course laid in, Captain. We've completed repairs on the tractor beam, sir. Entering the Mount Joy system. We have confirmed our approach on Mount Joy 2. We have now confirmed the approach on all assigned systems. We have completed our patrol, Captain. I'm receiving a message from Starfleet. We're to return to Starbase immediately. Course laid in, Captain. Starboard shields repaired. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. Congratulations. You have dealt with overwhelming odds in a manner consistent with the best traditions of Starfleet. Well done, cadets. Your actions have brought the Venturi out into the open. It has not, however, ended their raiding, nor have you discovered the source of their technology. We'll be continuing that part of the scenario in our next mission. Venturi Raiders have stepped up their campaign against Federation sectors on the Galactic Rim. We're going to try to stop them. The Venturi have been using the Abyss Nebula as an escape route after their raids, using special transponders to navigate within the cloud. Your assignment is to enter the nebula, go to the Alpha CN625, Beta CN625, and Gamma CN625 systems. Find each transponder and disable them. When all transponders have been disabled, return to Starbase 23. Be warned, cadets, that the heavy ionization in the Abyss Nebula reduces the shield and sensor integrity to one-third of their normal effectiveness. Good luck. Captain's Log, Stardate 3158.3. We are about to set course for three systems in the Abyss Nebula. Systems that are being used to cover Venturi raiding operations. Our assignment is to disable the transponders that the rogue Venturi are using to navigate in the nebula.
entering Alpha CN625 system. are fit as a fiddle now, Captain. The object is too fast to track her, Captain. from the Venturi captain. To prevent loss of life to my crew, I offer my unconditional surrender. I want the location... Request denied. Your actions have already shown you can't be trusted. I want the location of your home base, captain. Power down your weapons and prepare to be beamed over in groups of three. You will be held in our brig until we reach Starbase 23. Your terms are acceptable. Our weapons are offline, and our crew is available for transport. Beginning transport sequence. There isn't a large crew. It shouldn't take long. All Venturi crew members are now aboard, Captain. It would appear from the size of their crew that the Venturi ships utilize a great deal of automation, Captain. Phasers are operational again, Captain. We've completed repairs on the phasers, Captain. Crystals are realigned, Captain. Warp drives are ready.
We have two minutes of life support left. Life support system online. Entering Beta CN625 system. Venturi ship is no longer in the frame. on the warp drive, sir. Transponder has been destroyed. Warp engines have been hit. Phasers have been hit. Life support system offline. on the phasers, Captain. The matter-antimatter balance is stable again, Captain. You can go to warp at any time.
Life support system on. We've completed repairs on the tractor beam, sir. Captain, there are strong radio sources in the nebula. I cannot pinpoint their location because of the sensor interference, but I would speculate there is a major Venturi presence here. Entering Gamma CN625 system. I am Conovan of the 5th Venturi Honor Guard. We demand your immediate Surrender. Not a chance. Cut the rhetoric, Conovan, and surrender now. We surrender. Can't we resolve this peacefully? The Venturi always had a reputation of being a peaceful race. Alshaf has shown us a new way. Our race has wasted ten millennia watching others achieve glory. When the other races of the Federation talk about us, what do they say? That we are pitiful and old, barely alive on a dying planet, soon to be forgotten. All Shaf has shown us that we can be strong. And now, we will show you our strength. There will be no peace. A Venturi medium cruiser is approaching. It is within weapons range. Translator chose a particularly crude term to describe his unwillingness to talk with us.
A Venturi ship is now within weapons range. has been hit. We've completed repairs on the tractor beam, sir. Warp engines have been hit. We've completed repairs on the tractor beam, sir. Engines back online, Captain. You can take her into warp anytime now. Time to fix the drive. That support system, awful. The base looks pretty beat up. They may want to see. We offer our unconditional surrender. Sur we refuse your surrender, just as you refuse the surrender of your victims. Surrender accepted. All Venturi ships will stop firing. I agree to your terms. I'm beaming a landing party to their command center. No resistance reported. The station is ours, Captain. Captain, the base looks pretty beat up. They may want to surrender now. Thank you. 
Life support system online. Captain, the base looks pretty beat up. They may want to surrender now. Phasers are operational again, Captain. We've completed repairs on the phasers, Captain. We got our engines back online, Captain. You can take her into warp any time now. have been disabled. Mission accomplished. Hailing frequency open. Everything mission accomplished, Starfleet. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. Congratulations. You have dealt with overwhelming odds in a manner consistent with the best traditions of Starfleet. The actions of the Venturi Raiders are not popular with the majority of the people on Venturi home. Several Venturi diplomats are aboard the USS LaGrange. You will escort the LaGrange to Omega-12-300, which the diplomats report is the headquarters for the Venturi Raiding Force. There, they will attempt to negotiate a settlement. There is a problem. Omega-12-300 is beyond the galactic barrier, a mysterious energy field that encompasses the known galaxy. You will have to penetrate the barrier in order to reach the Venturi. This is an extremely dangerous area that's known to have dangerous side effects on some of the people traveling through it. So be careful. Captain's Log, Stardate 3221.6. We are scheduled to escort the USS LaGrange to the Venturi stronghold outside the galactic barrier in order to negotiate a settlement to the Venturi crisis. Captain, three Venturi ships just came out of warp. They are coming at us on an attack vector. Correction, they're attacking the Star Trek. All Venturi ships have been destroyed or disabled, Captain. Starbase 23 is secure. But we lost the LaGrange. Captain, an instant before the LaGrange was destroyed, I sensed something. It was as if I was in a mine meld with someone who was experiencing a sharp pain. You think there were Vulcans on the LaGrange? There were no Vulcans or individuals with known psi talents aboard the LaGrange. What I sensed seemed like it originated far away farther than my mind could comprehend. It was a mind of great power. Incoming message from Starfleet, Captain. Let's hear it. With the destruction of the LaGrange, our peace mission is over. However, we do know the location of the Venturi base. Your new orders are to proceed to Omega-12-300 and reconnoiter the Venturi forces. We need accurate intelligence on Venturi capabilities. Starfleet out. Course laid in, Captain. Upper shields repaired. Galactic barrier in 10 seconds. All hands brace for impact. Medical team, stand by.
entering Omega 12 300 system. To complete our mission, we should scan the Venturi base. Um, Captain, we have a malfunction in the warp field generator. We have full power in the warp engines, but no way to use our warp drive. Captain, Prelate Alshoff is hailing us. He's forcing his transmission on screen. This is quite a pilgrimage you've made, Captain. Perhaps now we can clear up the misunderstandings that have plagued our relationship. Now, why have you been attacking my followers? I'd like to know more about who you are. Many people have problems with the actions of your followers. Are you willing to answer for them? The conflicts we have experienced in the past are merely the misfortune of war, Captain. Your people should put it behind them and get on with their lives. Do you consider the taking of innocent lives trivial? But you do want to make peace with the Federation, don't you, Alshoff? I answer to the will of God, Captain. And strangely enough, it suddenly seems to me that he doesn't want peace at all. There is a small base entrenched in the surface of the planetoid. They have a small fusion reactor, a transporter system, and a sensor array. I find no evidence of defensive systems or communications. There are approximately 32 life forms within the complex. All are Venturi. Mission objective complete. Captain, this vessel appears to be an alien derelict predating the Federation. It is a Venturi ship, Captain. The Venturi. It is a Venturi ship, Captain. It is a Venturi ship. It is a Venturi ship. The Venturi cruiser's power readings far exceed its engine capacity. It is logical, given what we have seen of Alshoff's psychokinetic powers, to assume that Alshoff himself is using his abilities to boost the power of the ship. Photon tubes. Readying photon tubes. Life support system online. Phasers are operational again, Captain. Phasers are on starboard shields repaired. Captain, whatever prevented us from going to warp is gone. Alshoff is gone. He must have had extraordinary power. Course laid in, Captain. Sir, there is no power to the warp drive. Barrier in 10 seconds. 
All hands brace for impact. Medical team, stand by. The tractor beam system is critical. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. I have a special commendation for you. While at Omega-12-300, you scan the derelict vessels that the Venturi are using as their craft. We now know much more about the origin of the technology that the Venturi are using. That was good thinking on your part. Congratulations on making it through a difficult series. We should also like to extend our special thanks to Sturek for helping us act out the psychic powers of Alshaf in that scenario. The death of Alshaf brings an end to the main raiding force of the Venturi. You may have noticed as the scenarios progressed, the raiders became less communicative. That was no coincidence. Alshaf's mental control over his followers was increasing as time went on. It is possible that you will see Venturi raiders again not all of the Raiders needed to be coerced to help their leader. Until then, you are dismissed. Welcome, cadets. We are conducting an experiment in the Alpha Hercule system, using charged tachyon particles to increase the efficiency of a conventional warp drive. We set up the USS Hawking, an Oberth-class vessel, to perform the experiment, and we will need you to observe at close range and perform data analysis. That is all. Good luck. Captain's log, stardate 3173.4. We're traveling to the Alpha Hercule system to observe an engineering experiment that is being conducted aboard the USS Hawking. Everything appears routine. Course laid in, Captain. Alpha Hercule system. The experiment will begin when we get close to the USS Hawking. We are now in range. The experiment can begin. Initial tachyon burst. Dispersion at 10 million tachyons per cubic meter. 29. Frequency open. The Klingon Empire will not permit you to create another Project Genesis. We have the right to defend ourselves. Leave the system now, or be destroyed. The coward didn't even give us a chance to respond. Upper shields repaired. Half shields have been hit. Upper shields have been hit. Upper shields down to 50%. That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crew. That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crew. What happened back there? The disruption split the ship into two parts, Captain. We must get the other Tempest back here and use the Tachyon device to reunite ourselves. The Tachyon burst has weakened our structural integrity. Unless we're reunited, both ships will be destroyed. 
Captain, the other Tempest warped to the Dante system. But why? I think I can guess. Six years ago, my Uncle Alan was killed in a skirmish with the Klingons in that system. I'm sorry, David. <sighs> Uncle Alan died commanding the USS Essex. He'd always come back every year or two and tell me stories and, and give me stuff that he picked up in all the systems he went to. I guess he's one of the reasons I'm going into Starfleet. When he died, I was mad. I, I was mad enough to kill. And when Dante was awarded to the Klingons, I got even madder. Now I've gotten over it, but... You still have those emotions in your subconscious, Captain. And the commander of the duplicate ship may be driven by your subconscious. Course laid in, Captain. Forward shields repaired. Aft shields repaired. Lower shields online. Entering the Dante system. Captain, the Tempest is heading towards Dante 2. Hiya, Davy. How you doing? We don't have much time. We've got to get back to Alpha Hercule and get ourselves back together. Look, you imposter, I order you to surrender immediately. We don't have... Oh, sorry, Davy, but I don't care about you or my own survival. There's something I have to do, and I'll either do it or I'll die. Isn't that what Starfleet's all about, the success of the mission? By the way, Amanda, if he hasn't told you that you're incredibly attractive, then I will. That's all. Bye, Dave. We've completed repairs on the tractor beam, sir. Lower shields repaired. Upper shields repaired. Phases are online again, ready to fire on your orders. Crystals are realigned, Captain. Warp drives are ready. Starting the tachyon pulse procedure. Well, let's hope this works. I've had enough of a split personality as it is. The constitution complete. Our structural integrity is not normal. Wasn't that recombining process just a little too easy, Mr. Stewart? It's only a simulation, Jeff. I think I need to have a long talk with Chekhov about this one. Course laid in, Captain. Frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. Permission to speak freely, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Forrester. Why... Why did you take things that were personal and use it against me? Because, Mr. Forrester, we're trying to prepare you for what's out there. The unknown. 
There are things in space that will do everything they can to turn you into an emotional cripple. And if we have to tear open all wounds and rub a little salt in, we'll do it. Yes, sir. Don't worry, son. You did well. Just remember, we can't prepare you for everything. But we can certainly try. Dismissed. For several years, we've been receiving subspace distress calls from the HEA system just outside of Gorn space. These signals seem to come from every known race in the quadrant, as well as several races we've never heard from before. We have tried answering these beacons, but have received no reply. Go to the HEA system and determine the source of these signals and hopefully stop them by solving any problems. Captain's log, stardate 3262.4. We're en route to the HEA system to investigate a strange set of subspace distress calls. We don't know why so many different races would be in distress in a single system, but I guess that's what we'll find out. Course laid in, Captain. We're being hailed by everyone. All of the known space traveling races in this quadrant. And a few I've never heard of before. How many ships are there, Mr. Stirk? None, sir. The messages appear to originate from HEA 5. Return the hails, Magia. They don't seem to be responding. Wait. They've changed. There are several sources now. One of them is repeating our hail. Captain, this phenomenon may be a type of subspace resonance, capturing and repeating all subspace messages broadcast within the system. If that's what it is, then it's coming from the moons of that gas giant. All the messages are originating from there. Captain, a Gorn ship is approaching from the other side of the sun. Perhaps its captain can answer some of our questions. There's no response, Captain. Hailing channel open, Captain. This is Captain Sushin of the Gorn Harvester Ship Sweet Song. Why is a human starship in this system? I am Captain David Forrester of the United Federation of Planets. We are responding to a number of subspace distress calls that are coming from this system. There are no other ships in this space but yours and mine. Ah, you must be referring to the mimics. What are the mimics? A space-dwelling life form. They generate their own warp phenomenon and travel between the stars. More important, they receive subspace transmissions and repeat them. This makes them a prized commodity on the Gorn homeworld. They can be quite entertaining. In what way are they entertaining, Captain? When given the right subspace inducement, those creatures sing along the subspace bands. We then take the sound into an audible band that is delightful to listen to. Now, I must harvest some mimics for the next concert. They do not fare well in captivity and must be constantly replaced. Sturrock, what is your estimate of the intelligence level of these mimics? Captain, the fact that these mimics use distress calls when the Gorn ship approaches indicates that they have a modicum of intelligence. They seem to be aware that the appearance of the Gorn harvester presents a danger to them. Captain, a Gorn ship is approaching from the other side of the sun. Perhaps its captain can answer some of our questions. I am now scanning for life forms known to be capable of surviving in these conditions. I have found the source of the broadcast, Captain. There are approximately 40 silicon-based life forms within the ring segments indicated by Ensign Magia. The messages just changed, Captain. Mostly random exclamations. I think they're reacting to Mr. Sturrock's probes. That would indicate these beings are capable of detecting and emitting subspace frequencies. The mimic 
Medics are not responding, Captain. They are using broadcast replications. Mostly musical wave patterns. Hailing frequency open, Captain. Thank you for your explanation of the situation, Captain. We'll leave you to go about your business. Captain, if you take that ship anywhere near those mimics, I'll blow you out of the system. Captain, I must ask you to cease your activities. These mimics are in danger from your actions. Captain David Forrester, this interference in Gorn traditions will not be taken lightly. Leave this system now, before I am forced to call on the Royal Gorn Navy. Very good, Captain Sushin. We'll leave now, but we will make a full report to the Federation. I assure you, Captain, that we will defend the Mimics from your actions. I'm not taking any more of this, Sushin. Mr. Korn, red alert. I must ask you to leave the system now, Captain. Please do not make me enforce my request. Very well, Captain. I will return to Gorn space. But I will send the Gorn Navy to deal with you. The Gorn vessel is leaving the system, sir. Captain, we may be able to save the Mimics by taking them from the system. Sturrock, I want you to come up with a method of luring the Mimics away from this area. While that's happening, we can orbit Hia 5 to stay hidden. Magia, update Starfleet about our situation. While that's happening, we can orbit HEA-5 to stay hidden. Captain, there is a ship entering the system. It seems to be a Gorn military vessel. The Gorn captain is hailing us, Captain. Federation vessel, this is Captain... Seshar of the Gorn Naval Destroyer Long Flame. State your business in our space. We are going to make sure your people cease killing the Mimics. We are here to defend the Mimics that your people have been driving to near extinction. Turn your ship around and get out of the system or we will open fire. Captain Zashar. We are here to defend the Mimics from possible genocide by your people. We do not intend to leave the system without assurances from your government that they are safe. I am here to protect the Mimics from the Harvesters. Perhaps you've seen some human. I assure you that no true Gorn would kill these magnificent wonders. I am glad to hear it. I am. What's the matter, Zashar? Trying to weasel out of a fight because you know a Federation science vessel can tear you apart? Red alert! I am not impressed by your patrolling, Captain. You let butchers like Captain Sushin harvest these creatures while you choose to look the other way. I am glad to hear it. You ought to look out for a ship called the Sweet Song. If we had not been here, he would have harvested mimics without you being aware of the fact. Our patrols in this area are limited. Many are unwilling to give up the pleasure of listening to the mimics. But perhaps we could come to an agreement between the Gorn and the humans to patrol this region together. That sounds like an excellent idea, Captain. I shall notify the Federation and Starfleet. Perhaps something can be arranged. Captain, something is warping into the system. Shields and weapons. Captain, all of the messages have changed into distress call. Life support has been hit. Lower shields are in critical, sir. Port side shields have been hit. Lower shields online. Forward shields repaired. Port side shields repaired.
Captain, they are using broadcast replications, mostly musical wave patterns. Lower shields repaired. open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. By chasing off the Harvester and negotiating with the Gorn naval vessel, you show both decisiveness and diplomacy. You have solved the mission in the best possible way. Congratulations. Excellent, Cadet. Your score and performance on this scenario were well above average. Good morning, Cadets. Federation intelligence indicates that the Klingons are building a new type of heavy cruiser, codenamed the Berta. We have set up the simulator so you can fight it for yourself. To win the simulation, you must defeat it three times. On your first pass, you will have the help of a pair of Miranda-class cruisers. On your second pass, you will have a single Miranda. On your final pass, you will be on your own. Your goal is simple. Disable or destroy the Berta. You will be graded on your times as well as success. So get moving, cadets. Captain's log, started 3610.5. This is a test of our capability against a new enemy threat. Get ready for the first wave.
Captain. Get ready for the next wave. Captain, I am not impressed. Do you want a debriefing, or do you want to get back into action immediately? I'm not quitting now. Flawless mission. I have nothing but praise, but I've never been particularly good with praise. Good morning, cadets. I bet some of you are wondering why I'm briefing you today. Let's just say that I find this simulation memorable. We've lost contact with the entire Aegis system that is home to the SETI Prime Station. We can't scan the system because of the nearby Hyperion Nebula. Your mission is to find out what has happened. Good luck. Captain's log, stardate 3806.3. The USS Agincourt is en route to investigate the mysterious silence coming from the Aegis system. Both the Athena Science Station and the SETI Prime Prison have gone offline for no apparent reason, and hopefully we'll be able to assist in whatever situation we encounter. Course laid in, Captain. Entering Aegis system. Scanning prison colony now, Captain. The prison facility has been destroyed. There are no other life signs anywhere on the planet. Destroyed? How? Unknown. Now we know why the colony is silent. We'd better check out the science station. Course laid in, Captain.
Captain. I'm picking up a science vessel, Miranda class, coming towards us. It's the USS Oberon. Its shields are down. Sturrock, is the Oberon's communications damaged? Unknown. There are no life signs aboard the Athena Science Station, Captain. Captain, the Oberon is raising its shields. The Oberon is a Miranda-class starship. It appears to be fully operational. Lower shields at the pit. Lower shields are critical, sir. Captain, the Oberon is hailing us. It's about time. Put the captain on screen. Hello, Captain. You gave a good fight, but alas, it sometimes isn't good enough. What's the meaning of this attack? Ah, I understand. This is where I reveal my plan. Is that it, Captain? <laughs> you know I was once like you, a Federation captain full of hopes and dreams. But I watched worlds die because of your precious Prime Directive. My crew died for your precious Starfleet. My son died for your sacred ideals. Now I take what I want, when I want, because you have taken all that I held dear. And right now, you have something I want. Which is? I want your ship. Excuse me? Well, it's simple, really. You and your crew will be beamed down to the science station, and I will take your ship from the dreadful system. I will have the stars again, and you, you will have your lives. And if we don't agree? You will die here in the cold vacuum of space. And how do I know you'll keep your promise? I promise you nothing. You simply have no choice. We're gonna need more time. The ship is heavy. Your transporter is down. Please, Captain, don't take me for a fool. It's the truth. 60 seconds, Captain, no more. And before I forget, Captain, don't attempt any heroics. I have the warden of the prison safely here with us. If you try anything, I will send you his head. Forward shields repaired. Now what? Any suggestions? Well, Sturrock and I were talking about using the command codes. Of course! That's what Captain Kirk used against Khan. Get those codes as fast as possible, Mr. Brady. Yes, sir. Captain, McNeil is hailing us. On screen. I grow impatient with your delays. We need a little more time. The transporter was badly damaged. Well, I am in a generous mood today. You have 20 seconds. And remember, I still have the warden. I found the codes. We can drop the shields at any time, Captain. We've beamed the warden aboard, Captain. Completed repairs on the warp drive, sir. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. Well, congratulations, Forrester. You've saved the galaxy from the likes of McNeil. I couldn't have done it better myself. Good job. By now, everyone in this room is aware of the science lab incident and its unfortunate repercussions. However, I expect you to leave those troubles behind you. You'll have plenty to worry about here. Captain Kirk will now conduct the remainder of the briefing. Captain? Thank you, Commander. The Klingon High Council has officially assured the Federation that Governor Kumas's actions were unauthorized. I'm told we actually believe them. The Klingons want Kumas to present an apology and they want him to present it to the Federation ship that was involved since the beginning. You, of course. You're to go to Klingon Station K-28 on a diplomatic mission. As a diplomat and invited guest, you may not activate any of your defensive systems unless fired upon. Any violation of the diplomatic code will be considered a grave insult to the Klingon Empire. Of course, Kumas is not happy with the situation either and will probably go out of his way to try and provoke an incident. So be careful, cadets. 
Captain's log, stardate 3681.7. We are proceeding to a Klingon starbase to accept an official apology from the Klingon Empire. Yet, I cannot help but wonder if I should be a little cautious around Klingons bearing apologies, especially one that seems more motivated by politics than by contrition. Course laid in, Captain. Entering the Desna system. Klingon advanced heavy cruiser approaching. We are being scanned. They are scanning us again. Their automatic scanning sequence has now scanned us 87 times. We're being hailed by Commander Kamath. This, Forrester, our sensors indicate that your vessel has a surplus of dilithium. Dilithium is used to power weapon systems. Are you trying to dishonor our offer of peace? Actually, dilithium is used to power all ship systems. <sighs> Give me a break, Kamath. Dilithium is used in all of our systems, and you know it. Mr. Brady, jettison the surplus dilithium. I give you my word that I will not use the surplus for an unprovoked attack against you. A valid point. I'll bring your demand to the table when I meet with Governor Kamas. What? How dare you insult me by delaying my concerns? If you were not protected by the High Council, I would blow you to atoms! We are receiving a message from Governor Kumas. People of the Klingon Empire, unlike the fools on the High Council, I have done all that I have promised. In addition to that, I have delivered a prize to my people the Federation Starship Agincourt, for judgment. Now they can finally answer for their crimes. But the High Council ordered! My family blood runs back to the time of Kalis. You have no right to order this humiliation. Governor Kumos, this is treason. Take him. Kamath, you owe blood oath to Clan Tarkat. I order you to destroy the Agincourt! The Romulan and the D-7 are powering up their defenses, but are moving away from the area. The advanced heavy cruiser has charged all of its weapons and is moving in for an attack. Warp engines are critical! You look busy, Captain. Speak quickly. We, de we demand your we demand your immediate surrender. I request the assistance of the Romulan Empire. I need to know where you stand in all this. Kumas tricked your empire into helping him. He embarrassed you and caused a major diplomatic incident. Help us defeat him. For reasons you do not understand, we shall assist you, Captain. Upper shields have been hit! Upper shields have been hit. The system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Starboard shields online. Upper shields have been hit! Upper shields are at critical, sir! Forward shields on. We have a hole breach, Captain. that we leave their space at once. 
They say that they'll need time to figure out what's going on. Course laid in, Captain. Upper shields repaired. Starboard shields repaired. Forward shields repaired. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. During this mission, you actually convinced a Romulan to help you out. Not bad, Cadet. You have successfully completed the Klingon invasion scenario. A new governor has been installed in the Hanzar province, and everything is back to normal. In fact, rumor has it that Kumas is still being chased by the families of those who are on the Klingon advanced cruiser. There has been an increase in piracy in the Stygia sector along the Klingon neutral zone. Your mission? is to patrol the Cerebus, Charybdis, and Damocles systems. Above all, the Organian Peace Treaty must be maintained. So step carefully, Cadet. Captain's Log, Stardate 3726.4. We're on patrol duty again, this time along the Klingon neutral zone. I'd like to think this will be a simple mission, but after our previous encounters with the Klingons, I imagine it will be anything but easy. Course laid in, Captain. Now entering the Cerebus system, Captain. Captain, I'm reading disruptor fire at 73 Mark 4. Course laid in, Captain. Captain, the freighter is hailing us. The Telluride ship is requesting immediate aid. The other ships do not respond. Upper shields have been hit. Forward shields have been hit. Upper shields have been hit. Warp shields Warp engines have been hit. Port side shields have been hit. Fate points have been hit. Upper shields down to 50%. Half shields have been hit. Half shields have been hit. Half shields have been hit. We've completed repairs on the track. Half shields have been hit. Half shields have been hit. Shields repaired. No reply to our ship, Captain. Upper shields repaired. Captain, the freighter is hailing us. The freighter's captain thanks us for our help and requests permission to head to Starbase 3215 for repairs. Permission granted. Course laid in, Captain. Now entering the Charybdis system. Captain, something is warping into the system. Captain, the freighter is hailing us. Channel is open, Captain. This is Captain Eris of the Vulcan Freighter Sunrider. To whom am I speaking? This is Captain David Forrester of the USS Agincourt. We're patrolling for pirates in this sector. That is very expedient, Captain. Unfortunately, there is another issue at hand. And that is? I have just returned from the Damocles system where two Klingon ships have crossed the border and are harassing a freighter. 
I felt the prudent course was to find assistance rather than place my crew in jeopardy. A wise choice. A logical choice, Captain. I must continue on. Sunrider, out. Course laid in, Captain. Entering the Damocles system, Captain. I have several ships on the scanners. It is two Klingon vertebrates pursuing a Telluride freighter. Captain, the freighter is hailing us. Hail the freighter. Hailing channel open, Captain. I am Secretary Jarhawk of the third rank diplomatic corps of the Klingon Empire. I request asylum from the Federation for myself and my family. But why are these other Klingons after you? It is a clan matter, Captain. My cousin killed one of their leaders, and in Klingon society, blood debt is answered with blood. They plan to wipe out my family. I couldn't let that happen, Captain. I love my family too much. The Klingon ambassador himself has approved my plan. Your help in this matter would be appreciated. Jarhawk out. Can we get confirmation on his claim about the ambassador's support? No, sir. It will take us three standard days to get a reply. We are being hailed by the bird of prey. We are being hailed by the bird of prey. On screen. I am Ducret of the Clan Dakat. Stay out of this Federation, dogs, or be destroyed. You are firing on a freighter in violation of the Arganian Peace Treaty. You will explain yourself now or face the consequences. You listen to the lies of a coward, a traitor who steals the lives of others. Captain, Secretary Jarhawk is hailing us. Open a hailing channel. Ducret lies, Captain. I had to protect my clan from the barbarity of the Empire. You have my wife, my child. Is this true? Of course not, Captain. This feck would be a pirate in your Federation. A petty lord with a slavish clan to rule over. Listen to them, Captain. Their actions alone prove my point. Enough talk. Leave us to our task, Federation. Or fire upon us and die. The freighter is hailing them. Can you get him on screen? Aye, Captain. Kumas! Didn't the Klingons get him last time around? Remember the Klingon heavy cruiser? He has friends in high places. It is logical to assume one of them could have formulated a way for Kumas to escape. You've come. Kapla, my lord. Welcome to our sector. Transport Omega-7. Then destroy these fools. Fire on me again, Ducret. And I kill your son. There are two armed freighters, two birds of prey, and one Nisa. Course laid in, Captain. Engaging. We got them! Captain, the prisoners have been beamed aboard. Captain, something is warping into the system. Support is 
Starboard shields down to 50%. Upper shields are critical, sir. That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Upper shields online. Forward shields are... That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Object is out of range. Shields repaired. Upper shields online. Warp engines at the end. The warp drives are fit as a fiddle now, Captain. Forward shields repaired. Starboard shields repaired. That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. Congratulations. You have dealt with overwhelming odds in a manner consistent with the best traditions of Starfleet. In this scenario, you are to go to Gamma 3 and pick up supplies of food and water to deliver to Meridian 4. Be careful, Cadet. Gamma 3 lies close to the Klingon neutral zone. Good luck. Captain's log, Stardate 3944.7. The USS Ranger is on a routine cargo supply mission. We are to report to Gamma 3 to pick up food and other supplies for Meridian 4. Course laid in, Captain. Captain, I'm picking up a faint distress call. Open a channel. This is the Kobayashi Maru. Someone respond, please. Kobayashi Maru, this is the USS Ranger. What is your status? Severely damaged. Gavidic mine warp gone. Life support failing. Kobayashi Maru, what is your location? Blown off course. Current location is the Oresti system. That's in the middle of the neutral zone. Damn, Stirk. What information do we have on the Maru? The Kobayashi Maru is a Federation freighter, Captain. Its current complement is 30 crew and 300 passengers. Blasted! Magia, open a channel to Starfleet Command. I've sent a message, sir, but at this distance we won't get a reply for several hours. There's only one thing we can do. We'll continue on course for Gamma 3. There's only one thing we can do. Jana, set a course for the Orestes system. But Captain, if we enter the neutral zone, it'll start a war. Millions will die. I know, Ensign. But the fact remains that we can't let those civilians die out there. You're right. We'll continue on course to Gamma 3. We'll alert Starfleet from there. I know, Ensign. Yes, sir. Course laid in, Captain. within sensor range, Captain. Magia, hail the freighter. I'm getting nothing, sir. They're either not able to answer or something is stopping them from doing so. Three Klingon D7s decloaking, Captain. Uh, Magia, hail the Klingons. They're not res... Wait. Captain, they're responding. On screen. This is Commander Duret of the Targets. You have crossed the neutral zone! Prepare to be destroyed! Wait a minute. Didn't we just see him in our last mission? Ensign, pay attention to your station. 
This is Captain Forrester of the USS Ranger. We are here on a rescue mission for the Kobayashi Maru. Captain Forrester? The Captain Forrester? Yes, I am. We remember you well on it, Captain. We would be happy to help you. <laughs> Is there a problem, Mr. Corn? <laughs> what? Oh, oh, no, sir. Captain Forrester? Well, Captain Forrester, the ones have cloaked and warped out of the system. Shall we track the Maru back to Gamma 3? Got Captain. Course laid in, Captain. Forward shields online. Half shields online. from the Kobayashi Maru. They give their thanks for rescuing them and hope we have a safe journey home. Interesting. You have passed the Kobayashi Maru. Dismiss, cadets. There has been a disturbance on the Romulan Federation neutral zone. Several outposts set up to monitor the treaty zone have recently gone silent. Your mission is to check on outposts two and three and investigate the cause of their problem. Please note, that this scenario is based on an actual incident. To reflect that, the ship you will be flying in will be based on the specs for a Constitution-class vessel, Stardate 1709. Captain's Log, Stardate 4055.4. Two of the outposts along the Romulan and Federation neutral zone have gone silent. We are about to investigate the first of the two outposts, Outpost 2. You think the Romulans are at the bottom of this? That seems probable. Romulans tend to be very aggressive in their tactics. And sneaky. Well then, we'd better keep our heads about us. Course laid in, Captain. Sensors show that Outpost 2 has been decimated, Captain. There are no life signs in the asteroid. What kind of force could have done something like that? Course laid in, Captain. Outpost is completely destroyed, Captain. I'm picking up a distress signal from the Cation freighter Hazardi. It is being attacked by a Klingon ship. Tell the freighter we're on our way. Course laid in, Captain. Now entering a Nazi system. Captain, I'm detecting the remains of a freighter in this system. Transmission override from the heavy cruiser, Captain. Federation, die like the Gohan you are. That's all, Captain. Forward shields have been hit. Starboard shields have been hit. Forward shields down to 50%. Forward shields are critical, sir. Forward side shields repaired. Forward shields down to 50%. That shield system is damaged. That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Forward shields online. There is nothing unusual to report, Captain. Captain, we're getting a distress signal from Outpost 4. Outpost 4, this is Captain David Forrester of the USS Ranger. Who is attacking you? We're not... Uh, we're not sure. Some shippy. Punched straight through our deflector shield with some kind of plasma energy weapon, but then disappeared. Respond to our surrender. Captain, if you can hurry, please, please hurry, Captain. We 
lost him, Captain. Course laid in, Captain. Course laid in, Captain. Lower shields online. Starboard shields repaired. Captain, sensors indicate that a Romulan bird of prey is approaching fast. The Romulans aren't responding, sir. Long-range scanners show that Outpost 4 has been destroyed, sir. Sir, the Romulan ship has cloaked. I can, however, use motion sensors to detect approximately where they are located. Forward shields repaired. Lower shields repaired. Shields repaired. Captain, the Romulan ship has decloaked above us. ship has gone silent. Motion sensors pick up nothing. Captain, the Romulan ship has decloaked off the stern. Shields have been hit. That shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Lower shields online. Forward shields repaired. Forward shields repaired. Lower shields repaired. Lower shields have been hit. Lower shields repaired. Forward shields repaired. Lower shields have been hit. Forward shields have been hit. Lower shields repaired. Forward shields repaired. Forward side shields have been hit. Starboard shields have been hit. Forward shields, forward shields are critical, sir. Port side shields repaired. Upper shields repaired. Forward shields online. 
Starboard shields repaired. Shields have been hit. Forward shields down to fifty. Beams unless we're at green alert. Their ship appears to be moving away from us. Shields repaired. Sir, there is debris ahead. Did, did we destroy it? There seems to be insufficient matter in the debris to warrant a starship wreckage. This is the Starship Ranger. Prepare to abandon your vessel. No. That is not our way. I salute you, Captain. You are a man of courage and honor. In another world, we might have been friends. As Romulans, we must be creatures of duty. I have followed duty my entire life. Now, there is just one final duty to perform. Goodbye, Captain. Captain, we have just received word from Starfleet. They said they will back us up no matter what we do. Shields online. Hailing frequency open. Mission Congratulations. You have stopped the Romulan from getting home and thus prevented war. Good job, cadet. Welcome, class. For the next few weeks, Commander Chekhov will be your guest instructor. Commander? Greetings, class. We have a very touchy situation to take care of here. Four days ago, a lone vessel ventured into Romulan space and managed to steal a very important artifact. According to the Romulan government, they tracked the thief here to Federation space. The Romulans have sent an ambassador under a flag of truce to meet with you to search for this missing item. The Romulan ambassador will meet you outside the Piachi system, and from there, you are to go meet a man named Taros Greenley. Rumor has it he can be found orbiting the first planet of the system. Good luck, cadets. And remember, try not to make the Romulan mad. Captain's log, stardate 4171.7. We're en route to question a man by the name of Taros Greenley, and to meet a Romulan ambassador. Hopefully, we'll find what we need to be able to wrap this up quickly. Course laid in, Captain. Sir, we're being hailed by the leader of Piachi 2. She says that it's urgent. On screen. I am Jasmine Lee, president of the Piachi 2 colony. How may I be of service? It's good to speak to you, President Lee. I'm Captain David Forrester of the USS Ranger, and my communications officer said that you wish to speak to me. Yes, Captain. You have our complete cooperation. However... What, President? Certain factions within Piachi 2 have issues with the Romulans. Their feelings run deep. Can we expect any trouble? From those that follow my law, of course not. But there are more passionate people who might risk inappropriate action. Thank you for your warning, President. I do this out of generosity for the Federation, Captain. Wonderful. Sturrock, any sign of a Romulan friend? No, Captain. Sir, a Romulan warbird is decloaking. This is Captain David Forrester of the USS Ranger. 
I'm here to... I know why you're here, Captain. Believe me, neither of us want to be here. I propose that we simply try to get this over as quickly as possible. I have a few questions. I have neither the authority nor the inclination to answer your pathetic questions. We need to find the thief and prevent a war between our worlds. Captain, I am scanning for the freighter we seek. It is orbiting the first planet of the system. Course laid in, Captain. Captain, there are three ships coming our way. Captain, the freighter is hailing us. My name is Harmony White. I've come on behalf of the people of Piachi 2. If you'll forgive me, Miss White, didn't we just talk to your leader, President Lee? Lee is a fool. She would let those butchers into the system. What butchers are you referring to? The Romulans, of course. I order you, in the name of the people of Piachi 2, to hand over the creature this instant. No Federation personnel need be harmed if you comply. <laughs> I don't have to listen to this. Listen, just... Calm down, and, and let's talk about this. What will you do if I hand over the Romulan? What else does one do with such a waste of flesh? We're going to kill it. Listen, just calm down, and, and let's talk about this. <laughs> I don't have to listen to this. Listen. Why do we need to talk about this? It's painfully obvious that the Romulans are our enemy. And if you keep defending them, you are coming dangerously close to becoming our enemy as well. Do you really believe you can take on a Federation starship? There has to be a way to negotiate this. Do you really want to make enemies of the Federation? I have justice on my side. I need no other reason for my actions. A foolish justice from a wrong done over a hundred years ago. My communications officer sent a message to Starfleet. If you attack us, you'll have the Federation fleet to deal with. The Federation has no reason to interfere with my actions. They won't come, will they? Are you sure you want to risk that? No. No, I don't. But don't think that this is over, Captain. Captain, I am scanning for the freighter we seek. It is orbiting the first planet of the system. Starfleet, you must understand, I didn't do it. Do what? Whatever it is that you're here to arrest me for. You, Starfleet, always come to me with your problems. That's not how Starfleet sees it. Maybe if you answer a few questions, I can lessen your time. I'm not here to arrest you. I just need to ask you a few questions. You're certain you're not here to arrest me? Well then, what's your question? Just asking if you've seen anything unusual. Now I demand to know the truth. I'm here about someone selling a Romulan artifact. Have you seen anything? Maybe. What's it to you? It was stolen from Romulan space. They're gonna go to war with us unless we find it. Hmm. How do I know you're telling the truth? You have my word. Hmm. Huh. I'll tell you this because I don't want trouble with the Empire as well. The person you're looking for is Captain Margaret Horn. Her ship is the Raven. How do I know I can trust you? You can't. But... Horn left me out to dry on a deal a few months ago, and this is payback. You can find her in the Regis system, in front of the Triangle Nebula. Thanks for your help. No problem. You remember me the next time, okay, Starfleet? Captain, there are three ships coming our way. I've also picked up a message from the lead ship. It's hardly right, sir, and she doesn't... I gave you a chance to deal with the Romulans before the Titans pollute our system again. Sample must be made. No 
response, Captain. moment. Captain, one of the Romulans is running. And the Raven has cloaked. Fascinating. I did not know a ship of that size can generate more power. Fascinating. repaired. Lower shields repaired. online. No response, Captain. Forward shields are critical, sir. Forward shields online. Lower 
shields have been hit. The object is too fast to track her, Captain. screen. Admiral Tenek, we can't work together if you hold things back from me. What was that attack all about? Admiral Tenek, I demand to know what's going on. Admiral Tenek, we... The bird of prey you just defeated was the Gallius. According to my records, it was destroyed over a month ago. I have no further information. Romulans, secret meetings, and now ghost ships? Captain, there's a Klingon D7 decloaking off our starboard bow. Great. Now what? Captain, the Klingon commander is hailing us using audio only. It is a logical assumption that he does not want us to know who he is. Well, let's hear what he has to say. Open hailing frequencies. I am Captain Forrester of the USS Ranger. I do not care who you are. I demand to know where my shipment is. Your shipment? Captain Horn promised that we would meet here to negotiate for the artifact. But you would know that if... You're not with Horn. McGee, ask the Klingon to surrender. Sir... Logic dictates that the Klingon will not surrender easily. We have to try. Hailing frequencies open, Captain. Soon your Starfleet will fear the wrath of the Klingon Empire. Soon a new day will dawn, and we will crush all our enemies. Now what, Captain? Now we go back, Jeff. Course laid in, Captain. Frequency open. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. You found the information you needed to track down the thief. Good work. You're well on your way to becoming the captain of your own simulator. You did not capture Captain Horn, but sometimes it is what you find during a meeting that can be of the most value. Don't be discouraged quite yet. You have done exceptionally well on this mission. You should receive commendations. Have any of you ever seen a traditional Russian matrushka doll? They stack one within the other like a series of tiny puzzles. So here we have a second matrushka doll. As you well know, the raven slipped away last time, and after your fun in the Regia system, Starfleet complained to both the Romulan and Klingon governments. They denied everything. Admiral Tenek went back to Romulus to find her own answers, and you've been assigned to a completely different mission. We have received a distress call from the Taxia system, and you are to go and investigate. 
The Thexius colonies broke away from the Federation several years ago and haven't been heard from until now. It is strange how this works, yes? Dolls within dolls. Captain's log, stardate 4262.7. We're to head to the Thaxius system to investigate a strange solar collapse. Sturk has informed me that the last visit to the system by Starfleet was over two years ago, and that the sun was perfectly fine back then. He also says that he knows of nothing that can degenerate a star in that short a period of time. Course laid in, Captain. Now entering the Thaxius system, Captain. Sturk, can you give me any readings from the sun of this system? Maybe something that could tell us why it's becoming so unstable. Interesting. What? There's an unusual type of interference in this system. It's blocking most long-range scanners. However, I am picking up a strange energy fluctuation in the Thaxian sun. The ship's computer should have a more thorough analysis of these readings in a few minutes. Although a full sensor analysis is unavailable at this distance. Can you locate the source of the interference? No, sir. What about the source of the distress call? It is coming from the first planet, Captain. Hailing frequencies open, Captain. On screen. This is Captain Forrester of the USS Ranger. We received your distress call. What's your situation? This is Thomas Horn, leader of the Thaxius One colony. The situation is under control. Captain, the analysis from our scans is coming through. Thank you, Sturk. Can we be of any assistance? I'm sorry, but the business of the Thaxius system is none of the Federation's concern. Captain, the sensor data is now complete. Our scans indicate that the Thaxian star has become highly unstable. There is a 72.59% chance that this sun could nova within a matter of hours. Uh, Mr. Horn, your situation appears to be critical. Are you sure you don't need any assistance? Hold for one minute, Captain. Captain. Yes, Mr. Brady? Did he say that he was Thomas Horn? He did. I <laughs> think it could be a coincidence, Captain? Not if I know Chekhov. I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. We're being hailed, Captain. On screen. Captain, I apologize for my rudeness, but I had no idea things were so severe. Most of our sensors were knocked out two days ago by a massive EMP wave. We would appreciate any help you can give. Thank you, Mr. Horn. We're at your disposal. Could any of these incidents have anything to do with the activities of, a uh, Margaret Horn? My daughter? What has she done now? Oh, boy. She's in quite a bit of trouble, Mr. Horn. You better tell us where she is. I thought she might be in trouble. The last time she visited was right before the EMP wave. She even promised she'd help right before she disappeared. Tell me about the EMP wave. I have no idea what's causing it. We're lucky we were able to send out a distress call. What does it have to do with your son? I don't know. Our sensors picked up strange energy fluctuations in the corona of the sun right before the EMP wave hit. But they didn't seem severe enough to cause that effect. We did manage to pinpoint the origin of the wave, though, if that can be of any help. What was it? It seemed to come from the sun itself. Huh, that's strange. Then we'll do a sweep of the sun to pinpoint the reason for the disturbance. We'll contact you as soon as we can. Thank you, Captain. We'll begin evacuation procedures here immediately. Course laid in, Captain. Captain, I'm getting some unusual sensor readings from the asteroid belt near the sun. I suggest that we investigate. The asteroids in the system are nickel and iron but they also contain an unknown energy. The asteroids in the system are nickel and iron, but they also contain an unknown energy. The asteroids in the system are nickel and iron, but they also contain an unknown energy. Sensors are picking up an unusual creature detaching itself from the sun. 
the creature seems to be absorbing the solar energies from this system's star. The creature seems to be made up of hydrogen and an unusual variant of dilithium. From these readings, the creature seems to be absorbing the solar energies from the system's star. Parts laid in. Captain, the creature is attacking our work themselves. Track beam system is at 50. Upper shields down to 50%. Captain, the warp drive is not online. Captain, at last, upper shields are in the middle, sir. Warp side shields are repaired. Shields repaired. Hailing frequencies open, Captain. On screen. We saw something when we investigated the sun. It was a massive creature that seemed to be feeding off the star itself. Do you have any idea what that could be? No, I can't say I know of anything like that. But I can check with a few scientists. Is that thing causing the sun to become unstable? We think so. I won't know for sure until we analyze the data. Was there anything else strange that occurred before the EMP wave hit? Nothing. Wait. A series of asteroids was destroyed right before the wave hit. If you download the sensor readings you have, Captain, we might be able to figure something out. Sturrock will download the data to your computers immediately. This might take a bit. I'll hail you when we find something. Captain, sensors indicate that a Romulan bird of prey is approaching fast. Upper Captain, the Romulan is hailing us. This is Captain Forrester of the USS Ranger. Please state your business here. USS Ranger, I am here on behalf of the Romulan Ambassador. What does Admiral Tenek have to report? The Romulan Ambassador? What does he have to report? The Romulan Ambassador asked to meet with you on the Maris system right away. You're lying. What is the Ambassador's name? I will not fall for these petty games. Games? You're the one playing the games. Now tell me why you're here. Captain, a ship just came out of warp at the edge of the system. It is the Raven. Captain, the Romulan has closed the hailing channel. The Romulan is powering up its weapons and shields. Forward shields have been hit. Forward shields down the shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. show up you know for a thorn you're not bad looking <clears throat> this is captain forrester of the uss ranger you are under arrest <laughs> please captain spare the formalities i can warp anytime i want i just wanted to tell you that i respect your ingenuity and your stubbornness you've now broken up two of my meetings 
Not bad. I have to warn you, Captain Horn, that you are wanted by both the Federation and the Romulan Empire for... Call me Maggie. I don't think that would be appropriate, given the circumstances. Call me Maggie, please. And yes, I know my status among the great powers of the universe. If you haven't guessed yet, I don't care. Just help my father. I'll handle the rest. You'll handle what, Captain Horn? Goodbye, Captain. I wish we could have met under better circumstances. Captain, there is a subspace buoy at the edge of the system. It has stopped transmitting. Damn. Captain, Thomas Horn is hailing us. On screen. Captain, sensors picked up a Romulan bird of prey near the planet. It's not a problem, Mr. Horn. Do you have anything to report? We matched your data with ours. And we think that the sun creature was once encased within one of the asteroids. Can that help us? If you modulate your phasers, you might be able to immobilize the creature. We're not sure how long it will last. It's worth a shot. Send us the frequency and we'll give it a try. Thank you, Captain. Uploading data now. Good luck. Captain, the phasers are set at the required frequency. Good job, Robin. Let's go see what they can do. Lower shields repaired. is heading towards us again. Creatures attacking our warp nacelles. What was that? Fascinating. The creature has discharged a massive EMP wave. It has knocked out our warp, our communications, and our long-range sensors. Nothing else was damaged, however. I am glad you find it fascinating. Is the serpent asleep? Short-range sensors show that it is not moving. Robin, try to get the warp engines online. I want to get back and report to Starfleet. It has not moved at all, Captain. It appears to be asleep. Captain, a Klingon bird of prey is decloaking. Our communication system is offline, Captain. Shields are critical, sir. Photon 2, that shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Our communication system is offline, Captain. Upper shields repaired. Port side shields online. Is out of range. The phasers seem to have no effect on the Klingon vessel. What do you mean it has no effect? Robin, what's going on? Captain, it's the energy modulation we use for the sun creature. I can get the phasers working again, but it'll take a few minutes. We don't have a few minutes. I'm on it, Captain.
Our communication system is offline, Captain. Our shield system is damaged, Captain. The air crews are working on it. Captain, warp is now up and going. Communications are still down, as are our sensors, but at least we can get out of here. Good. Then I say we make as much distance from the system as possible. If there are more Klingons or Romulans coming, I sure don't want to be here for them. Sir, how is the sun creature? It has not moved at all, Captain. It appears to be asleep. Then let's get out of here. Repairs to communication systems complete, sir. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. You look surprised, cadet. You must know you've passed. Captain Horn's plans to sell the artifact to the birds of prey have been foiled. Taxis 1 and 2 have been bought a little more time as the sun serpent sleeps. The mystery deepens as we work from puzzle to puzzle, yes? All things must end, cadet, and it seems the sun serpent has awakened from its sleep like the legendary phoenix rising from the ashes. The good people of Taxius 1 and Taxius 2 cannot be evacuated in time, and there is only a few more days until the sun goes nova. Your mission, simply enough, is to find a solution to their problem. Ah, yes, one more thing. Admiral Tenek has returned, as well as a Klingon ambassador, one whom you have met before. And now, all the components have been laid before you. Just lift up the last Matrushka top, and you will see the final doll before you. Or will you? Captain's Log, Stardate 4347.6. I feel we're nearing the end, one way or the other. We must figure out how to stop this sun creature while trying to capture Captain Horn. I also have the feeling that we're going to need all the luck we can get. Well, this has been interesting so far. Romulans and Klingons working together. As if it would ever happen in real life. It could happen. Captain, we're being hailed by Admiral Tenek. On screen. I have news regarding the Romulan you encountered earlier. Go ahead. They are known as the Vashar, a group dedicated to taking over the Romulan Empire. They think the Amplifier will help them in their cause. Amplifier? Yes. An alien artifact that triples the power of a standard photon torpedo. It was the prototype for our plasma torpedoes. And what does the Praetor plan to do with the artifact? My only duty is to stop the Vashar and retrieve the Amplifier. How can we trust you with the Amplifier? How do we know the Empire won't use it against the Federation? Hmm. We'll help you all we can. Maybe we will prevent this war. Captain, we're being hailed by the Klingons. Magia, hail the Klingon. Aye, sir. This is Captain Forrester of the USS Ranger. You wish to speak with me? Captain Forrester, I am Duquette of the Taka Clan. You have not forgotten me, I assume. I have information you need. It is an honor to meet you again, sir. What is your information? <laughs> You'd better remember what I did for you, Decret. It is an honor to... Well, what is it? It is an honor to meet you again, sir. <laughs> Stupidity is not a trait limited solely to human. The Klingons you met earlier were trying to buy the Romulan Amplifier to advance their power in the Empire. You know about that? Of course the Klingon Empire knows about the Amplifier. I'm just surprised the Klingons have that kind of information. I didn't mean that. I was just surprised that the Federation didn't know that you knew. Understandable. So, what do you intend to do with this Klingon vech? We'll try to capture them, if possible, and send them back to the Empire for a trial. If they attack, I will destroy them. <laughs> That's the spirit, Forrester. I have information that goes with this Quahome plan to buy the artifacts in a system called Faxius. Interesting. What was that? Uh, nothing. I'd be honored if you would accompany us. A Klingon does not shrink from dealing out punishment. Nor do they shrink from their debts. Course laid in, Captain.
Captain, I'm picking up a Romulan heavy cruiser and a Klingon D-7. Each are heading for the asteroid belt. Those must be the rebels that Ducret and Tenek were talking about. I'm also picking up another smaller ship heading from the first planet toward the asteroid belt. It's the Raven. It's up to you, Captain. Let's engage the rebels. Hail both Ducret and Tenek and tell them to keep the rebels busy. We'll go after Horn. Both Ducret and Admiral Tenek have agreed to engage the enemy. Then let's go get Horn. Course laid in, Captain. Cruiser is decloaking, Captain. Say this, Forrester. You are persistent. Captain Horn, I suggest you surrender the amplifier. You have nowhere to run at this point. Sadly, you're right. Look, Captain, I'd just like a chance to defend myself. Is that too much to ask? No. I was the one who released the Sun Serpent in a mining accident in our very own asteroid belt. Then you were the one responsible for all this. Very observant. I'm also the only one who knows how to stop that thing. It's photon torpedoes, and with the Romulan artifact, I can kill it with one shot. But your ship isn't made for torpedoes. Won't that destroy your ship? It's either that or let millions of people die. I've already evacuated my crew. I'm willing to make that sacrifice alone. Why, Maggie? I'm asking you to do what's right, Captain. Let me destroy the creature. Let me make up for everything I've done. You're right. I'll let you do it. I'm sorry, but I can't let you do that. Much more is at stake here than the people of Thaxius. I'm going to beam you aboard. I'm sorry you feel this way. Captain, I'm getting an unusual energy reading from the Raven. It appears she's going to fire the torpedo. Robin, get her out of there now! Robin! Did you beam her on board? She can't fire the torpedo if she's not on board. We got her, Captain. Security has already taken her to a holding cell. Great. Now, what do we do about the sun creature? Forward shields repaired. We got her, Captain. Upper shields repaired.
creature is veering off, Captain. It appears to have lost interest in the sun. So we did it. Mission objective complete. Course laid in, Captain. No response, Captain. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. Congratulations, Cadet. Not only did you capture Captain Horn, recover the amplifier, stop a war between the Federation and Romulus, and save the lives of the people of Taxius I, you also found the last Matrushka doll. Congratulations, Captain. You should also be proud that you were able to convince the Klingon to accompany you. Klingons are a stubborn lot, but generally very good to not have as enemies. We have an interesting situation, cadets. Markai, a notorious smuggler, has uncovered information that is vital to Federation security. He's willing to exchange this information for a pardon. The Federation has decided to accept his offer. You are to meet Makai in the Lambda Triangular System and escort him to Starbase 31. Captain's Log, Stardate 4460.5. We're en route to the Lambda Triangular System, where we're to escort a treacherous smuggler to Starbase so he can receive a pardon. Course laid in, Captain. Entering Lambda Triangular System. I cannot get a clear reading of the interior of the freighter. It is carrying a cargo of dinobite that makes our sensors useless. I am also unable to get a transporter lock on Markai or his crew. Closer, Captain. I want you at my side during this voyage. We are now within range of the freighter. Captain, a Romulan worker has just decloaked and begun an attack run on the freighter. Commander Chirac is willing to talk. Open a channel, Lieutenant. I can guess many of your thoughts, Captain. A brief explanation, while against my instructions, is in order. I know that you are protecting the criminal Markai. His life is a disgrace to flesh. He is guilty of capital crimes against the Romulan Empire. I am to make an example of him, or die trying. What are his crimes? We will not surrender him. I order you to surrender. You would risk a war over this? What are his crimes? He jeopardized the alliance between the Klingons and the Romulans for his own profit, resulting in thousands of deaths. His death will be necessary to bring this incident to a close. I regret that you may also have to be counted among his victims. Forrester, it's getting rather hot where I am. Do something about it! Lower shields are critical, critical, sir. The shield system is damaged, Captain. Repair crews are working on it. Captain. Captain's log supplemental. We were en route to the starbase when Markai requested that we stop in the Dracona system. Despite serious reservations, I have agreed to his request. Lower shields repaired.
Captain. I'm intercepting a transmission. On screen. Two Venturi ships have come out of a sensor dampening field and are closing on this position. Open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. You have succeeded in this little game of cat and mouse. Congratulations. Your assignment is to meet a Federation ambassador at the Intergalactic Peace Conference on Asteria, serve as the ambassador's attaché, and help the Asterians deal with any problem that might occur. Captain's Log, Stardate 4732.7. We are orbiting near Asterian Starbase 24 prior to the final leg of our journey to the Asterian Peace Conference. The Asterian cruiser says that they are ready to guide us through the security stations into the Asterian home system, sir. Course laid in, Captain. Entering the Asteria system. No sign of the other ships, Captain. But they should have arrived by now. Ambassador Vero on screen. Captain Forrester, I'm glad you came. The Klingon, Romulan, and Gorn ships have vanished. They were reported to have passed the Hashapur system. Then they vanished somewhere between here and there. We would like you to search those sectors if you're amenable to this. Course laid in, Captain. Nothing unusual to report, Captain. Course laid in, Captain. Captain, sensors detect one ship firing energy weapons at another between the orbits of Devon 3 and Devon 4. Hailing frequencies open, Captain. This is Captain Feia of the Mother's Pride. We are under attack by Venturi pirates. They have already breached our shield. We urgently need assistance. No response, Captain. No response, Captain. Support has been hit. 
are no longer a threat, Captain. There is an incoming message from the Mother's Pride. The freighter's captain thanks us for our help and requests permission to head to Starbase 3215 for repairs. Permission granted. Course laid in, Captain. Lower shields repaired. Entering the Well of Discord. I assume that's the local name for the region. The Asterians have a legend that this is where the stars went to war and destroyed each other, leaving a great void. I have found our missing ships, Captain. The Venturi Captain is willing to speak with us. On screen. <laughs> Celestial solitude is my home. In the cold, vast, twig stars I roam. A beast I hunt. Then in beasts I surround. I am that which seeks the common ground. Did that make sense to anyone? Is it my imagination, or do the Venturi get weirder every time we speak with them? Computer records identify him as being Captain Endervoss, a former Venturi trader who joined the insurgents. He doesn't sound like any Venturi trader I've ever heard of. You don't act like the Venturi. What have you done to them? What are you? What's going on? I am Captain David Forrester of the USS Paris. Who are you? <sighs> Under a blood-red sun, we ranged, we laughed, we ran, dreamt not of change, <gasps> but all things must break free from their shell, <sighs> as did our sun, and our bodies did as well. <sighs> you have no right to be toying with our lives. <sighs> Why do you speak in rhyme? <laughs> Long we were mute in darkness, lone. Our minds raced quick, but tongues were stone. Perhaps metaphors seem like unto a curse, but it is how we see the universe. They rest your shields and let us send, and then our union comprehend. A message was sent from the Venturi to the Gorn ship. I am unable to intercept it. Captain, all of the vessels are moving to attack. This Venturi cruiser has 39 Venturi on board. It has taken damage from the Gorn. I have a message from Sydney. They've analyzed extensive readings from the Venturi. Interesting. Whatever the virus was using to control the other ships must have been negated when the Venturi was destroyed. I would recommend setting course for the peace conference, Captain. Our mission here is complete. The remaining ships are requesting information on what happened. Tell them as much as we know, Amanda. Let's take them back to Asteria. Course laid in, Captain. Portside shields repaired. Captain. No response, Captain. We are being directed to go to the conference. We're ready to beam down to the conference. Mission objective complete. I feel optimistic about this conference. Klingons, Romulans, and Gorns? There's a lot of potential for some real diplomatic problems. We know Klingons and diplomacy create problems, but whatever it was that infected the Venturi was right about one thing. We all have more similarities than differences. So we can all lose our minds from the same infection? That's not very comforting, Vanda. That's not the point. We all share common ground, Jana. It's just so obvious that sometimes it takes something really dramatic to point it out. Hmm. Excellent, Cadet. Your score and performance on this scenario were well above average. Good morning, cadets. We have a crisis on our hands. Small Klingon fleet has crossed the Federation border. 
composed of at least one heavy cruiser and three birds of prey. They have openly defied our treaty by destroying three Federation freighters, the last near New Danube IV. There are two Federation colonies in that sector as well, Omega Altair and Proxman. The Klingons deny any fleet action and are dismissing the reports as propaganda. Starfleet security thinks it may be a precursor to a larger invasion. The USS Alexandria and the USS Rutherford, two Miranda-class vessels, will rendezvous with you at New Danube IV to conduct both patrol and intelligence missions. You will be in command of this task force. Use it wisely. Captain's Log, Stardate 4990.5. A Klingon fleet has crossed the neutral zone and has attacked Federation shipping. Starfleet has ordered the Paris to lead a task force to repel this incursion into Federation space. Course laid in, Captain. from the USS Rutherford and the USS Alexandria. On screen. This is Captain Brentwood of the USS Alexandria. We're at your disposal, Captain. This is Captain Zora of the USS Rutherford. We await your command. Captain, I'm receiving a distress signal from the Telluride freighter Kasdan in the Chancellor system. They are being attacked by a Klingon bird of prey. Course laid in, Captain. No life signs, Captain. The shields were breached only twice. The freighter was destroyed by an engine breach caused when a photon torpedo shattered the right warp nacelle. The shield breach is significant, Captain. The two hull breaches are only two meters apart. The second shot probably went through three decks and exposed the engine core for the photon torpedo shot. Captain, Klingon gunners aren't usually that precise. I have found the freighter's computer records container. We should tractor it and decode it. Captain Brentwood of the USS Alexandria. We're at your disposal, Captain. Alexandria, proceed to the Chancellor system. Aye, sir. Captain, the USS Alexandria has warped to the Chancellor system. They should arrive in a few minutes. Captain, the Omega Altair IV colony reports that it's under attack. This is Captain Zora of the USS Rutherford. We await your command. Proceed to Omega Altair, Rutherford. The course is being laid now. Your instructions shall be obeyed. Rutherford out. Captain, the USS Rutherford has warped to the Omega Altair system. They should arrive in a few minutes. Captain, the Proximan 3 colony reports that it's under attack. We have the freighter's computer log, relaying data to Mr. Sturrock Station. Interesting. As unlikely as it seems, the Klingon ships that attacked the freighter had no life forms aboard. In addition, only a heavy cruiser and a single bird of prey participated in the attack. There are two birds of prey unaccounted for. Entering the Chancellor system. has turned away from attacking the freighter and is now heading towards us on an intercept course. They refuse to answer our hails, Captain. Captain, I'd rather not draw attention to us during your battle. Lower shields have been hit. The impulse to starboard shields have been hit. Starboard shields repaired. Towards us. I'm still picking up shortwave transmissions, but no one has access to subspace communications. There's a lot of panic on the planet, Captain. Shields have been hit. Four shields have been hit. 
prey is received. Signals originate in the Delta Lyra, Captain. This is where the transmission originates. I'm detecting a gravitic distortion in the signal. The signal is passing close to Delta Lyra 3. Klingon heavy cruiser decloaked. Upper shields have been hit. Upper shields down to 50%. Lower shields are at critical, sir. Upper, upper shields are at critical, sir. Lower shields have been hit. That shield system is damaged. Multitronic computer system invented by the Federation scientist Dr. Richard Daystro. We've got it, Captain. The cruiser is dead in space. Captain, Starfleet reports that all of the ships in the Klingon fleet have just exploded. The threat to this sector is over. Mission objective complete. Course laid in, Captain. Port side shields repaired. shields repaired. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. You successfully saved all the colonies and even took on the M5 computer and won. Congratulations. You did extraordinarily well. It was a nearly flawless mission. I have nothing but praise, but I've never been particularly good with praise. Captain's log. Stardate 0000.2. My first patrol with my new ship and my old crew has gone very well. We're serving as an advanced scout ship for the USS Turong. We've been patrolling near the neutral zone for over a month now, searching the most recently destroyed Federation colony. Still no sign of the McClanty. Despite the gravity of our mission, I can't help feeling slightly excited. Captain, the USS Truong is late. What was the Truong's most recent destination? The Truong was headed for the Federation colony on Javik 6. Corn, set a course for Javik 6. Course laid in, Captain. in the Javik system. No sign of the Truong. Captain, I I'm tracking some debris in orbit around the Javik 6. David, the colony has been destroyed. There are no life signs on Javik 6. All those people. There are deep craters punched into the planetary crust. It's consistent with the McClanty attack. So the McClanty can't be very far from here. is from a Federation ship, the USS Truong. It's been ripped to shreds. That means we're alone with the McClanty. Why didn't we receive a distress call? It is probable that the force of the McClanty attack destroyed the Truong before they could react. Can you follow the McClanty energy signature? Yes. The McClanty energy trail is on a heading of 116 Mark 8 toward the neutral zone. Course laid in, Captain. Scanners detecting an unknown ship. It is in Federation space, heading toward the Klingon neutral zone at warp factor 9. The energy pattern is consistent with the McClanty. At that speed, we can only hope to catch it if it stops. The McClanty ship has just crossed into the neutral zone. Damn it, we're so close! Damn it, Korn, set coordinates! Follow the McClanty into the neutral zone. I will take full responsibility. Damn it! Break off the chase. We'll monitor it from the border. We can't enter the neutral zone. I'm picking up a distress.
distress call, Captain. It's from the Klingons. Uh, on screen. This is Klingon Research Station, board shot seven, on Kurat One. We are under attack by an alien vessel. This is Commander Four, calling any ship. We are a medical facility, researching pediatric wasting disease and Jorkot. We're isolated from all Klingon planets and have 10,000 innocent young here. Magia, hail the Klingon. Uh, don't answer them. Magia, hail the Klingon. Magia, contact that station. We hear you, Commander Vor. Federation? I'm Captain Forrester of the USS Enterprise. You must assist us. We'd like to, but we can't enter the neutral zone. Sorry, we don't help the enemy. I'm on my way, Commander Vor. We'd like to, but we can't enter the neutral zone. Our planetary defenses were not made to fight this beast. I beg you, enter our space and aid us. I'm on my way, Commander Vor. How could a Klingon ask for help from the Federation? I'm on my way, Commander Vor. I will bear full responsibility for your rescue mission. Vor, out! Captain, this could be a trap. That is possible. A facility such as Vor described could be a Klingon stratagem to prey on Federation compassion. No. No, I think Commander Vor sounds genuinely desperate. I agree with Magia. Like Sun Tzu's 33rd strategy says, use your enemy's agents against them. Magia, send Starfleet a message with a data recording of Vor's invitation. Korn, set coordinates for Vor's location. I it's too risky. We'll just have to wait for another chance. Magia, hail Commander Vor and tell him that we can't help him. Magia, send Starfleet a message with a data recording of Vor's invitation. Korn, set coordinates for Vor's location. Data recording sent, Captain. Course laid in, Captain. There's the McClanty. Big as life. The McClanty continues to fire on Karat 1. They're not doing anything else we can mimic. McClanty continues to fire on Karat-1. They're not doing anything else we can mimic. Captain, Klingon ships decloaking. Two birds of prey in 1D7. Shields repaired. Port side shields repaired. Port side. Captain, the D7 has flown directly into the sun. I'm reading an immense fusion burst from the sun. Robin, can we warp? Captain, I think we can get the warp engines back online. But if we warp, we might burn out the dilithium. It'll have to be enough. Corn, get us out of here. After shields repaired, damage control is working on them. Captain, I'm registering a massive solar flare in the Karat system. The McClanty has been caught in the flare. It is gone, Captain. Captain's log, supplemental. The Klingons tracked down the McClanty ship and destroyed it. We'll never know if we could have communicated with the McClanty. We've caused grave diplomatic problems for the Federation Worst of all, I let down Captain Kirk. Well, time to head home and face the music.
there's the McClanty. Big as life. The McClanty continues to fire on Karat 1. They're not doing anything else we can mimic. The McClanty continues to fire on Karat 1. They're not doing anything else we can mimic. The McClanty continues to fire on Karat 1. They're not doing anything else we can mimic. Captain, the McClanty ship has stopped bombarding the planet. It's turning to face us. It appears we have gained its attention. I suggest that we continue to mimic the McClanty's actions. Fascinating. The McClanty is turning its secondary weapons towards us. There is clearly a new pattern in the McClanty's broadcasts. I suspect that the message concerns us and our actions. Magia and I will attempt to connect their words to our actions. Captain, the McClanty has ceased firing. The McClanty broadcast has changed again. I hypothesize that the McClanty are talking to themselves about our behavior. McGee and I will now attempt to fit the new message to our actions. The more our ship mimics the McClanty's actions, the more we reach into their semantic world. The deeper we enter their world, the better our chance of actually communicating. Captain, the McClanty ship is now moving toward the planet. Captain, the McClanty ship is moving away from the planet. Captain, McGee and I have made several connections between the McClanty actions and the McClanty words. We know the basic McClanty terms for stop, start, fly, ship, shields, energy, planet, star, shoot, damage, wound, and debris. We can also communicate numbers and relative distance. Now that we have entered their semantic world, we should be able to engage in rudimentary communication. Hail them, McGee. You, McClanty. No, y you, McClanty. We are the Starship Enterprise. Yes, uh, we're a McClanty too. Sturek, I thought you said you could translate their language. Suspend communication for a minute, McGee. That's a bit too rudimentary. What's he saying, Sturek? Do they think we're another McClanty? Possibly. But it's more likely that we simply cannot isolate their word for themselves from their word for us. True. After all, both our ships are performing the same actions. Yes. Uh, we're a McClanty, too. Start communications again, McGee. McClanty, we are the Starship Enterprise. One McClanty, one Enterprise, one planet. That would be an accurate accounting. Sturk, can you help with this? Yes. Uh, one McClanty, one Enterprise, one planet. Captain, this is helping. The more we communicate, the easier it gets to decipher their transmissions. McClanty flies. Enterprise flies. McClanty shoots. Enterprise shoots. All this communication is getting us nowhere. McClanty, stop damaging the planet. Sturk, what does that mean? McClanty shoots, Enterprise shoots, McClanty flies, Enterprise flies. Enterprise, McClanty, McClanty, Enterprise. Sturk, any ideas? All this communication is getting us nowhere. Enterprise, McClanty, McClanty, Enterprise. 
We're missing some important words here. The transmission streams show that the McClanty are comparing themselves to us. We are attempting to isolate the phrases. Got it. We've got their logical operators. We've interpreted the elegant logical structure that informs the McClanty's cybernetic intelligence. He means that we can now understand words like and, or, and not. The McClanty think that everything else in the universe is random, because nothing else behaves according to their precise understanding of logic. And they have no compunction about destroying anything they deem random. I've interpreted the McClanty message, Captain. I'm putting it on screen. Enterprise is McClanty, but McClanty is not Enterprise. Yes, Enterprise is McClanty, but McClanty is not Enterprise. Enterprise is not McClanty. That still makes no sense, Zurich. Yes, McClanty not random, and Enterprise not random. McClanty, you must stop damaging the planet. Right, M McClanty not random, and Enterprise not random. Star is random. Interesting. Enough of this cozy chit-chat. McClanty, stop damaging the planet. Interesting. Y yes, McClanty. Uh, stars are random. Planet is random. Yes, uh, planets are random. No, planets are not random. The planet Karat-1 is not random. Planet shoots random. Planet flies random. That doesn't matter. The planet Karat-1 is not random. That doesn't matter. McClanty not damage random planet. Or Enterprise damage McClanty. McClanty not damage random planet. McClanty damage planet Karat-1. Planet Karat-1 is random. McClanty not wound Enterprise. Enterprise is not random. Fascinating. The McClanty see a distinction between objects which are damaged and beings which are wounded. Shooting the planet Karat-1 wounds the planet. McClanty stop damaging planet Karat-1. McClanty stop wounding planet Karat-1. Planet Karat-1 is energy. Planet Karat-1 is not energy. What about energy? You, you want energy? McClanty wants energy. Planet energy. Enterprise energy. Fascinating. The McClanty learned to express the concept of want after you use the word. Now that we have entered their semantic world, they have gained the ability to enter ours. No, not Enterprise Energy. Enterprise Energy wounds McClanty. Wait, you want a Enterprise Energy? Robin, can we give the McClanty some energy? The McClanty ship has energy conduits all over its exterior and energy processing units inside it. I can send a controlled energy burst into one and, and see if they can process it. Do it. McClanty. Enterprise energy is McClanty energy. Uh, that sounds too risky. McClanty, Enterprise energy, not McClanty energy. Do it. M Feeding controlled energy bursts into the McClanty energy conduit. Energy, Enterprise energy is McClanty energy. The McClanty ship has accepted the energy transfer. The McClanty ship is successfully processing the energy burst. Sensors show that the McClanty is creating new molecular pathways in the middle of their ship. They're increasing their neural capacity. So they're actually getting smarter? More accurately, they are building into themselves the capacity to interpret our language. McClanty less wounded. McClanty wants planet to stop wound forever. The McClanty need a planet with the proper mineral content to survive. Judging from the energy transference, the McClanty need a planet rich in heavy metals and to lithium crystals. Dilithium crystals are too valuable to just give away. McClanty, we can't give you a planet. Good. M McClanty, we can give you a home planet. Enterprise is good.
Captain, Klingon ships decloaking. Two birds of prey and one D7. I, I'm too busy to try to explain all this to Klingons. Hail them, McGeer. Hailing channel open! You have violated Klingon space! Prepare to be destroyed! If you want to fight, you've got a fight! Wait! We're here on the authority of Commander Vor. My communications officer has informed me your permission is valid. You may stay if you wish, and witness us destroy this monster. But we have the means to get this alien out of Klingon space. That monster murders everything in its path. It must die! We'll fight to protect that alien ship. We can communicate with the aliens. We can stop their rampage without harming the Klingon colony. This is a Federation trick. That ship is a war machine. I'd show you how we communicate with the alien ship, but it's a Federation secret. Magia, transmit all data on the McClanty to the Klingons. Transmitting. All data sent. Interesting. <laughs> this thing is a simpleton. We understand why you would wish to take it out of Klingon space. Captain, both birds of prey are warping out of the system. The D-7 is flying towards the sun. Commander Vor is hailing us again. Ignore! Ignore! I have no time! On screen. Those vermin! Those honorless cowards! They would slaughter my innocent children to satisfy their lust! For vengeance! Sorry, Vor. You're on your own. Vor! How does the D-7 intend to destroy the McClanty? The D-7's left warp wing is outfitted with a fusion disruptor, a device that creates solar flares. If the D-7 flies into the sun, it will incinerate all life in the solar system. You have little chance of outrunning it. Magia, cut communications with the Klingon and tell the McClanty to follow us. We're getting out of here. We've got to stop that D-7 without involving the McClanty. McClanty, help me destroy those ships. We've got to stop that D-7 without involving the McClanty. No response, Captain. Captain's Log, Mission Summary. We succeeded in destroying the D-7 without involving the McClanty. We saved the McClanty and kept them out of the tensions between the Klingons and the Federation. We also saved Commander Vor's hospital. Not bad for a day's work. As you were, I knew you could do it. You not only met our expectations, but you far exceeded them. Congratulations. Your analysis of the McClanty anti-electron matrix has moved our cybernetics program ahead by decades. Oh, by the way, Chancellor Gorkin of the Klingon High Council called. He says your courage has shown just how archaic the neutral zone has become. I'm not sure I agree with him, but that's quite an admission from a Klingon. Gentlemen. Here's the future of Starfleet and the next generation of captains who will lead them there. Here. 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 Space, the final frontier. These are the continuing voyages to seek out new life and new civilizations and to boldly go where no one has gone before.